Everybody's got a copy of the. There's a copy of the book, and what everything that uh, needs to be talked about. Fire skips are going to be in the book, so I'll, I'll start with that first. Tell you how we're going to answer a lot of your questions, and what this one is here, the, the smaller one, is basically a copy of my slides. And as I go through certain slides, uh, just so you know where I am in the order, uh, down at the bottom, grab your pen, start writing questions. Um, and PJ, I don't know if you want to, uh, we sometimes do uh, you know, find bugs that we save for archaeological digs. Really? <laughs> I don't know where this bug came from, but let's get another one. Um, where you have these things? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it right where, so let's um, let's open it up this way first, and uh, the beauty is, uh, CJ, the recording's already on? Yeah, John. I don't see the red light, that's why I just want to double check. He's on red lights. Oh, I thought they sometimes do. The reason why we record everything is because every now and then we're talking, and there's a lot of information, and we can't capture it all. So we record everything. Uh, we did a class yesterday, a webinar, that's nationwide, but it uh, was focused out here. So we had. Uh, inspect, uh, inspectors from Beverly Hills, uh, uh, Merced County, or Merced's, uh, is that what I'm saying it correct? Merced's. And um, we had some other people on the back end. There, there was no reg for testers in that class, but, uh, and then next, in, in June, we have a class in Boston on the 6th. We have a webinar on the 7th. We have a, a class in Jersey City, New Jersey, on the 8th. So. Uh, come July, we're looking to go up into Seattle and San Francisco area, so we don't we have to determine where, but we basically just create a class. Prior to this, every class was happening when a certain city official called us in and said, let's have a class. So we've already done a class uh, per request of a city official in Seattle, Tacoma. Um, we've done uh, classes in Chicago, Springfield, Illinois, Texas, Houston, Dallas. Uh, we've done classes all up and down the East Coast, which is, you know, Boston, all the New England states we've done a class for, including Washington, D.C., um, tri-state area. We've done classes when we've been brought in by associations. We've been brought in by um, academies. Uh, so a lot of it is fire prevention. So just so you know, a lot of these classes, everything we record, we bring it up to YouTube. And so on YouTube, we have what's called Fire Escape Academy. Pretty simple. I think we have 182 videos in the academy. So if we record a class like this, this will make it up there. So if you want to go see a class up in Portland, Oregon, um, it's, it's on there. It's part of our classes. So the, the thing about all these classes, it repeats the same thing. What I'm about to tell you, you already know. You already have, and you can already do. So as soon as we go into that piece of it, it's like, and that's what happened yesterday. Uh, we were talking about, we were talking to, uh, yeah, I think it was uh, the city of Merced plus Beverly Hills. Like, you know, yeah, we're writing these violations, but we don't know where to go back and, and what code because some things are not adopted, or whatever it may be. But we're also going to be talking today about Reg 4 testers and just what LA wants. So I want to go over this. I want to tell you that all of it is always going to be there uh, for you to review and send to your friends. So a lot of these videos you can just send right to your friends or your departments. Um, but let's talk about what the book says, and then I'll tell you what you can write down. Some of the things we're going to cover today, and then I'm going to ask you some questions first before we start this to say, what are some of your concerns, and, and am, I, am I going to be able to answer it with today's class? So, the National Firescape Association.org, what is it? It's an organization that we have to start simply because there was no other one out there where you could get standard in, uh, industry standard documentation or videos. So uh, when we started putting things out as either Firescape Engineers or Firescape Services, we weren't as well received as a class from the National Firescape Association.org. Who's the members? And by the way, this has just recently started, so it's still not 100% legal. It's still not 100% because uh, uh, you have to document it with the IRS. You have to do all these things. So it's not making any money as we speak. It's not doing anything. So just, you know, it's in its infancy, but what does it have? All the videos and all the industry standard documentation is there. The membership is made up for, first of all, the free people that get in is all fire prevention people or fire departments are free, building departments are free, housing inspectors are free to get into the membership. Who pays? Fire, uh, anybody that's an engineer, a fire prevention company, painting suppliers, anybody that wants to get in and sort of hook up into this thing and supply that market is going to pay to be a member. 
But otherwise, all the information is free. So a lot of the documentation we make, we make free of charge through the National Fire Escape Association to fire prevention. So if you say, hey, give me the documents that you're about to show me, give me my version of it, we it's all done for free. So we're gonna cover today, what is fire escapes? We're gonna cover today a, a simple repairs and procedures guideline, okay? What this is, is basically every city official, when you write a violation, you'd love to have a document that you can either email or fax or, or hand over to the client. And this, this industry standard documentation, which we, we make with the help of city officials, basically says if you're an inspector, a structural engineer or an inspector, read this. If you're a paint or you're a repair guy, read this. And if you're a painting guy or gal, read this. We normally put your city's information up here and the contact information up here so that they know it's coming from you. If they have any questions on these guidelines, departmental procedures and guidelines, they call you. They don't call us. They call you. We talk about repair procedures for, for uh, fire escapes. Well, here it is. This is how you fix anything from a tread to a bolt to a tread to a, a, a railing to a ladder. It's all there. So we try to make it as simple as possible. We even design fire escapes for you to show you how they're put together. So today we'll talk about just how every fire escape in the United States is built. They've been doing it since the 1900s. It has never changed. So let's tell you how everyone in the United States, West Coast to East Coast, is built. We'll cover that today. We'll talk to you about drawings. So how, how a drawing is supposed to look if somebody's going to get a, a new fire escape built and what can and cannot be drawn. So that's here also, an example of drawings. And then we're going to talk about a confidence test. What is a confidence test? It's nothing but a final exam to an engineer that doesn't allow him to, uh, to give you an opinion on a fire escape ever again. So no longer it is to the best of my information, knowledge, and belief the thing looks good to me. It's a, no, I need a guarantee that uh, never a fireman, never a tenant will ever die on this fire escape. Uh, I can't give you that. Well then, don't do this, don't do this kind of work anymore. Although, as soon as you give me the guarantee, and was like, well, how do you get guarantees? We're going to tell you today how, how he can get a guarantee. But every structural engineer must fill out one of these forms. And it's a final exam. This final exam will scare the hell out of the fly-by-nighters. And the ones doing it correctly, they're going to have more work because they, they have no problem. And then a tag. We're going to talk about tags today. What is this tag? Every elevator you walk in has a tag. And the reason why you feel comfortable when you push the button, because it says it was certified two years ago, a low test or whatever. Every fire escape, right now in Seattle, they have, every fire escape must have a tag. When you go up there, does every fire escape have a tag? No. Have they started it? Yes. So every fire escape that has a tag, seven to 10 feet off the ground, permanently affixed, and it's white, in the middle of the night, and she may know this, in case of fire, the line guys, right? In fire department. In case of fire, do not use the elevator for fire escape. So imagine that. Now, with that being the case, imagine they get there in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden there's a white tag on there, and it's fire escape has no deficiencies. What are they gonna they gonna ask anybody about that? They're just gonna use it. So that's the main thing. So we talk a lot of training. We say the first thing you're gonna do in, in a three to five year program, because that's how long it's gonna take to get fire escapes back on the wraps, because it took 75 years to screw it up. We're not gonna fix it overnight three to five years, but the first step is identifying every one of them in some sort of color. If you get there and you see dangling dreads, you stick a red one on it as a city official. If you see a, a fire escape that looks good to you and just rusty brown, you stick a yellow one on it. And the only one that puts up a white one is a structural engineer or a fire escape engineer. That's it. So you go through this tagging program in your, in your city. Uh, and CJ, just so we don't get the back of Kate's head all after. I'm you, going uh, to check that right now. <laughs> you no, you're fine. Yeah, I'm you good. Sure. Yeah. Okay. She's completely off. Uh, so with that, now you can understand just common sense stuff. You've got tags that are up there that will now help the very people you try to worry about. Now, the, the fireman now knows that the fire escape is in good condition. But now, how about the tenants? Because if I live in a building and I'm paying rent and I got a yellow tag on my fire escape or a red one. What's going to happen? Well, you think I'm going to make a phone?